In the NASCAR Xfinity Series over 40 years in the sport, there have been many numbers come and go. On any given weekend, you will see 38 unique numbers on the track, and each of those numbers has a story to tell. Hi, I'm your host Matt, and this is NASCAR Number History, presented by Dogleg Media. In this series, we look to tell the stories of each of those numbers. Who first ran the number, who first won with the number, the driver who visited Victory Lane the most, and every other driver to grab a trophy in the number. We also mention suggestions provided by you, the viewer. We go in numerical order, and today we look at numbers 40 through 44. If you miss numbers 0 through 39, the Xfinity Series number history playlist will be linked below. Also, the Cup Series number history playlist will be linked below as well. Be sure to check it out after this one. And if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. It helps a ton, and I definitely appreciate it. But with that intro out of the way, let's dive into some more Xfinity Series number history. We start out with the number 40, and I'll go ahead and give a spoiler. We don't have any winless numbers in this episode. While there are a couple that came close, including the 40, we will have winners for each of the numbers today. Let's kick things off with the 40. The 40 has one win with one driver. It's competed in 554 total races, and it has a 0.1% win percentage. The first time we would see the 40 in the Xfinity series would be in the series' first race at Daytona in 1982. Dennis Bennett would be the driver, and he would finish 28th in the number's debut. This would be Bennett's only career start, so unfortunately there are no photos. But hey, the tombstones are back. The only winner in the number's history would be Kevin LePage in 1998. Yup, it's that Kevin LePage. The man whose last name became a verb for all the wrong reasons would get the 40 its only victory. He would win at Bristol in 1998, driving for specialty racing. And this would be Kevin LePage's last NASCAR win. Sorry I don't have a better photo than this of the car, but it's better than what Mr. Bennett previously gave us. Now let's take a look at some honorable mentions. Mature Storm and Impact both mention Bobby Earnhardt. Bobby is the son of Kerry Earnhardt and the grandson of Dale Earnhardt. He would make two starts with MBM Motorsports in the 40, both in 2017. And then NASCAR Hot Wheels and Obungus mention Kerry Earnhardt. Like father like son, father of previously mentioned Bobby Earnhardt, Kerry would make four starts in the Galaxy Motorsports 40 in 1999. Sorry that the only picture I have here is a die cast, but it's better than some crazy watermark being on the photo. Regardless, this paint scheme is pretty nice. I approve. And that brings us to the current driver, or should I say the last to drive, since the 40 doesn't currently have a driver in NASCAR. The last to drive the 40 would be Carl Long at Homestead in 2018. The most notable thing about this last start for the 40 is that it would happen in a zombie dodge. To my knowledge, this would be the final race for the Zombie Dodges in the Xfinity series. Man, I wish Dodge was still in. This car looked great. We move to the 41 now, and it has a bit more history than the 40, but is still lacking in the wins department compared to a couple other numbers to be discussed in this one. Let's get into the 41. The 41 on the Xfinity side has five total wins split between three different winners. It's competed in 352 total races, and it has a 1.4 win percentage. The first to pilot the 41 in the Xfinity series would be Mike Watts. He would take it to Charlotte in 1982, finishing 35th. Watts would make eight starts between 1982 and 1985, so it's no surprise that I wasn't able to find photos of his time in the sport either. The first to take the 41 to victory lane would be Jamie Obie. Driving for Mountain Racing, he would score his only Xfinity Series win at Oxford Plains Speedway in 1987. And fun fact, this win would come in just his second career start. Obi is also a three-time Bush North Series champion, which is now known as the Arkham Menard Series East, winning all three consecutively from 1988 to 1990. The driver with the most wins is Reed Sorensen. Sorensen would win three times in the 41, all coming with Chip Ganassi Racing. He would win twice in 2005 and once in 2007. This win in 2007 at Gateway would also be the last time the number visited Victory Lane. His 2005 campaign with the number would result in a fourth place points finish, the best of his career. Honestly, his 2007 winning scheme with Juicy Fruit is a great scheme. This is such a cool sponsor to win with. The only other winner to note is Jamie McMurray. 
Jamie Mack won once with the 41, back in 2004 at Phoenix with Chip Ganassi. He would only make two starts in the 41, winning in his last attempt ever with the number. His first race with the number was a last place finish at Michigan that same season. What a way to turn things around. And on to honorable mentions. Titan, Obungus, Tyler Saintwood, and Divine mentioned Jennifer Jo Cobb. Cobb would make three starts in the 41, all coming in 2011 for Rick Ware Racing. Great mention. And then Sam Hemsel, Divine, and Jordan Van Western mentioned Brian Clawson. Clawson would make nine starts for Chip Ganassi in the 41 between 2007 and 2008. He would have a best finish of sixth with it, which is honestly impressive. Lawson is a sad story in motorsports, as he would lose his life in a race at the Belleville Nationals in 2016. Rest in peace, Brian. Stay one lap ahead of us. And we have another number without a current driver. The return of the Tombstones is a welcome return, though. The last to drive the 41 would be Kevin Harvick at Darlington in 2017. He would run the 41 six times that season and came so close to bringing it another win at Charlotte, finishing second. Honestly, in those six attempts, he would finish top five in five of them, with his other finish being a sixth place finish at Watkins Glen. These races would obviously come with Stuart Haas, but with their lineup being set with the double zero and 98, I doubt they bring the 41 back anytime soon. And now we move to the 42, and it has by far the most success in this stretch of numbers, mostly thanks to one guy. Let's get into the 42. The 42 has 19 total wins split between eight different winners. It's competed in 509 total races with a 3.7 win percentage. The first to race the 42 would be Alan Powell. He would bring it to the track in 1982 at Bristol, where he would finish 24th in the premier attempt. He would make 29 total starts in the Xfinity series, 11 of those with the 42. And hey, look at that. We have a photo of this car. I love the colors, and it looks like they had some support from Budweiser. Very nice. Powell would record a top 10 in the 42, finishing 7th at Hickory in 1983. The first win for the 42 would happen 24 years after its debut in the series, with Casey Mears in 2006. This win would come at Chicagoland driving for Chip Ganassi in the Haviland ride. And for the life of me, I couldn't find a photo of this win, or of this paint scheme with the Bush Series sticker on it. But trust me that it was the exact same as his Cup Series scheme that season. This win would end up being the only Xfinity victory for Mears. And now we get to the driver with the most wins. And it's fairly obvious, I believe. Kyle Larson is the winningest driver of the 42 in the Xfinity Series, with 12 total wins. Here are some crazy stats for Larson's time in the 42 on the Xfinity side. He would record 42 top fives in just 75 attempts giving him a 56% top five rate. Larson never ran a full season in the 42 for Ganassi, but he made the absolute most of his time in it. In 2018, the last season of driving it, he would run six races, winning four of them. Larson holds 12 of the number's 19 total wins, and he is the only driver with multiple wins in the number. Because Larson is the only multi-time winner, that means we have six other drivers to win in the number all with one win apiece, starting with Alex Bowman. Bowman only made two starts in the 42, both coming in 2017. He would win his first ever start with the number, at Charlotte that season. I really like this paint scheme, and they actually made the number color match the paint scheme, something a lot of teams don't do. This is a thumbs up from me. Next we have the melon man himself, Ross Chastain. Ross, like Bowman, made few starts in the number, with three total. Ross would win in his second race with the number in 2018, at Las Vegas, and he would come oh so close to back-to-back -back wins, finishing second at Richmond the next weekend. This would be Chastain's first of two Xfinity Series wins, and his first ever NASCAR win as well. And now we move to Tyler Reddick, who made a handful of starts with the number, all coming in 2017. Much like Chastain, Bowman, Larson, and Mears before him, Reddick would get his first career win with the Ganassi 42 ride. This win would come in my home state of Kentucky. I was actually at this race, and I thought to myself, that guy's gonna be something special, and I think I was right. And are y'all ready for another driver to get their first career win in the 42? Motorsports legend Juan Pablo Montoya would also get his first and only career Xfinity win behind the Ganassi 42. This win would come in just his seventh start at Mexico City in 2007. 
Montoya would then go on to win in the 42 on the cup side, something only he and Kyle Larson have done. There is another driver who very well could join that club soon, but more on that later. Montoya is a generational talent, winning an F1, IndyCar, and NASCAR. I don't think we truly appreciated our time with him in NASCAR. At least I know I didn't. And finally, before we get to our last to win, we have a pretty cool winner. It's Justin Marks, owner of Powerhouse Trackhouse Racing. Like every other winner on this list, his first career Xfinity win would come with Chip Ganassi in the 42 car. This win would come in 2016 at Mid-Ohio, one of my good friend Dice's home track. He would come close to other victories as well with the 42, finishing fourth at Road America in 2017 and second at the Roval in 2018. Sure, he only has this one lone win in NASCAR as a driver, but what he has done as an owner is so much more important. This sport is better because of Justin Marks, so we should all say a collective thanks, Justin, for all you do. And now we move to the last to win in the 42, John Hunter Nemechek. Remember when I said that Kyle Larson and Juan Pablo Montoya were the only drivers to win in the 42 on both the Cup and Xfinity Series side? Well, as fate would have it, John Hunter Nemechek is in the 42 currently in the Cup Series, so he could join that elusive group. And we also have a perfect 8 for 8 on drivers to get their first career wins with the Ganassi 42 car. Nemechek would get his first win at Kansas in 2018, his only with the number. This would come in his first Xfinity season, and he was impressive in that year. In 18 starts, he would score that lone win, 6 top 5s, and 11 top 10s. 2018 was an all-star season for the 42, with three different drivers winning in it that season. The 42 also finished second in the owner's point standings, losing the title by one point over the double zero of Stuart Haas. Do you think that Nemechek can join Larson and Montoya as drivers to win in the 42 on the Cup and Xfinity Series side? Let me know down below. And on to honorable mentions. NASCAR Hot Wheels and Sam mentioned Kenny Hendrick. Kenny would make nine starts in the Ganassi 42 Dodge in 2009. He would post a best finish of 12th at Las Vegas that year. And then Silver Thunder mentioned Kevin Hamlin. Firstly, I love this take on the Haviland ride with the white base paint instead of the black. Hamlin would make eight starts in the 42 for Ganassi, coming in 2007 and 2009. He would post two top tens and led one lap with the number. And on to the current driver, and we actually have one for the 42. Leland Honeyman is the current driver of the 42, with 2024 being his first season with it. He currently drives for Young's Motorsports, and for his rookie season, he isn't off to a bad start. Four top 20s to start the season isn't too bad. Could Honeyman add his name to the winner's list on this one? Man, the 42 was a long one. Now we have another fairly short one. It's the 43. A number with a ton of history on the cup side barely escaped the status of winless on the Xfinity side. Here is the 43. The 43 has one total win with one driver. It's competed in 563 total races and it has a .1 win percentage. The first to drive the 43 in the Xfinity series would be Donnie Ling Jr. He would finish 33rd at Martinsville in 1983 in the number's debut. Ling would make 22 total starts in the Xfinity series, but that Martinsville race would be his only in the number 43. While I don't have a photo of the car he drove, I do have a photo of Ling on this trading card. Apparently he enjoyed racquetball. There's an interesting fact for you. The only winner in the 43's history would be Johnny Sauter. This win would come in 2003 at Richmond driving for Curb Racing. Sauter would make 17 starts in the Curb 43 in 2003, recording this lone win and 7 top 10s. Also, something interesting to note about Curb Racing. Did you know that Richard Petty would win his 200th Cup Series victory with Curb Racing? I had no idea about this until researching for this video. But the team has two Cup Series wins, both with Petty, and one Xfinity win, being Sauter's win in 2003. And for honorable mentions for the 43, I'm going to mention one of my own honorable mentions. The GOAT, Jimmy Johnson, would make one career start in the 43 on the Xfinity Series side. It would come in 1998 for the aforementioned Curb Racing. He would finish 33rd, so it's not a great stat for the 7-time Cup champion, but I thought it was an interesting note nonetheless. And we have another number with a current driver, and this time it's Ryan Ellis. He has piloted the Alpha Prime 43 since 2023, but his results have been anything but Alpha or Prime. 
Can he turn things around and grab the 43 at second Xfinity Series win? And that brings us to our final number in this one, and it has seen a fair bit of success in its time. Let's finish this one up with the 44. The 44 has 12 total wins split between four different winners. It's competed in 782 races and counting, and it has a 1.5 win percentage. The first to pilot the 44 would be Bobby Labonte way back in 1982. He would finish 26th at Martinsville driving for his brother Terry's team. Sure, he would have a rocky start in his first attempt, but he would go on to get the number its first win in 1991 at Bristol. I know, that is nearly 10 years after the first start, but sometimes greatness takes time. And greatness it was. Bobby was not only the first to drive and win with the 44, he is also the winningest with the number, with a total of 8 wins. These 8 wins would stretch from 1991 until 1997. The 44 is special to the Labonis, and we will be hearing about a couple more of them here shortly. We have two other winners to get to before our last to win with the 44, starting with David Green. Green would win twice in the Labonte Motorsports 44, one in 1994 and one in 1995. His win in 1994 is a crazy one, as he shouldn't have been the winner of it at all. This was the infamous Mark Martin blunder where he would come down pit road on the last lap under caution, thinking that the race was over. By Martin doing this, Green would win the race as he was in second place at the time of the caution. 1994 was also a massive year for Green and the 44, as it would be a championship season. Green only spent two years in the Labonte 44, but he certainly made the most of his time, making 82 starts and recording 20 top fives and 36 top tens. And then we move to the team owner, Terry Labonte. Terry recorded one win as an owner driver of the 44, coming at Talladega in 1999. Terry only made 22 starts in the Xfinity series with the 44. And that brings us to the last to win in the number, and it's another Labonte. Son of Terry, Justin Labonte would get the last win for the 44 at Chicagoland in 2004, driving for his father's team. I didn't know a lot about Justin's time in NASCAR, but it appears that this win was the only finish of note. Outside of this win, he only recorded two additional top 10s in 76 attempts. This Coast Guard Dodge is a beauty though, and I'm certain that this was a special moment between father and son. And we move to the final honorable mentions of this one. Titan, Sam, and Divine all mention Mike Harmon. Harmon has made the most starts of anyone without a win in the 44. He would pilot the number from 2001 to 2003 for Mixon Motorsports, and then again for his own team in 2007. A not so favorable stat for Harmon is that in the 76 starts, he failed to post a single top 10. But it's alright Mike, you are still loved by the fan base. And that brings us to the current driver, and we end the video with three straight numbers with current drivers. Brennan Poole is the current driver of the 44 in the Xfinity series, driving for Alpha Prime. He is in his first season with the team and number, so the jury is still out on how he will perform with it. They have shown glimpses of promise, but the finishes just haven't been there for a veteran of the series. Can Brennan snap a 20 year long winless drought for the number? Let me know down below. And that'll do it for numbers 40 through 44. Some surprising bits of information in this one. Will 45 to 49 have the same? As always, I'm prone to forgetting drivers, let me know anyone who I may have missed for this one down below. We will be back next time for numbers 45 through 49, so be sure to let me know your honorable mentions for that one down below. If you liked the video, please consider giving it a thumbs up and subscribing. It helps a ton and I definitely appreciate it. And did you know that 74% of my viewers aren't subscribed, but they are returning viewers? If you keep coming back, but haven't hit that subscribe button yet, what are you waiting for? Thanks as always to the Dogleg team for all of their help. Y'all make the channel and community a better place. Thanks Darksy, Dice, Nino, Elite, Jafer, and The Gamer for all that you do. Be sure to check the community tab of the channel. We do cool little giveaways like autographed merchandise and diecast, as well as updates and polls for the channel. You definitely don't want to miss it. And we also have a Discord server. Find the invite in the about section of the channel or in the description below and come join us over there for even more fun. We have over 220 members currently, and we have fun times every single day. You don't want to miss out on this, and we would love to have you. But that'll do it for us here at Dogleg Media. 
I'm Matt, your host, and you've been watching NASCAR Number History. I'll see you next time.